Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to explore the wonderful world of Montessori math. Montessori education is a unique approach that emphasizes hands-on learning and self-directed exploration. And the math area is no exception. In the Montessori math area, children are encouraged to learn through exploration and discovery. They're given a variety of materials and tools to work with from beads, rods to number cards and counters, these materials will help children explore concepts such as counting, addition, subtraction, and so much more in a concrete hands-on way. At its core, Montessori math is about more than just memorizing numbers and formulas. It's about developing a deep understanding of mathematical concepts and the ability to use math in practical, real-world situations. By encouraging children to learn at their own pace and in their own way, Montessori math helps children develop a lifelong love of learning and a strong foundation in mathematics. So, are you curious to learn about Montessori education and mathematics? Because we're excited to share this journey of discovery with you. Let's dive in and explore the fascinating world of Montessori math together. So the Montessori math is divided into six areas. The first area is teaching numbers 1 to 10. So we would teach children, we would just focus on teaching children the counting of objects from 1 to 10, as well as learning the written symbols of 1 to 10. From there, we move to teaching them the decimal system. That's the second area. That means we teach them one unit, one ten. 100 and 1,000. Now I know what you're thinking, what? Why would you do that? After 1 to 10, aren't you supposed to teach 11, 12, 13? Montessori does it another way. She teaches them the decimal system using beautiful material called the golden bead material. And she uses the decimal system to later teach children linear counting. So that would take us to the next area, the third area, which is linear counting, where we learn how to count from 11 all the way to 100. After linear counting, the next thing we come to is learning about operations, but we do this in the form of a game. So this area is called group operations. And over here, the children are learning addition, subtraction, multiplication and division, but they do it as a group. There is no recording, they're not writing anything on paper. We use the golden bead material once again, and we teach them how to do four digit addition with changing and without changing. For example, learning how to do sums like 1,235 plus 3,122. Same, we would do this with uh, carryover, we would do this with subtraction, with subtraction and borrowing, with multiplication, with division. And I can see many people out there thinking, what? Why are children doing four-digit operations before they do simple addition or simple subtraction? The reason for this is that we use these golden bead materials, which are large materials, and you can see in the pictures that I'm attaching here and children see large quantities come together and they understand physically the concept of addition that I have two small quantities I bring it together and I get all these beads that's what happens when I add when I subtract I have this big quantity of beads and I take away something and I'm left with something small as well so in a very physical way, she's trying to give them an understanding of these operations, which is why we do these large numbers to start with. We then come to the fifth area, which is introduction to recording. So now we're going to be doing operations again, but this time we will do simple addition, simple subtraction, multiplication, and we're doing it now by recording on paper simple sums. We've done a lot of these materials and I'm going to link all of our math materials in the description box and I'll try and link many above here so you can watch the math activities. So we teach them 
uh, how to put numbers together, how to put quantities together and they become bigger, how to decompose quantities for subtraction. We learn about multiplication, uh, we learn about bonds of 10, we use the beads, we use the strip boards, and then we finally come to our sixth area, which is individual operations. Again, we come back to doing uh, four-digit operations, but this time the children are doing it individually and using some cards to do it on paper. So they will do addition with four digits, without and with changing. The same goes for subtraction, multiplication, and division, and they're writing it on pieces of paper. An interesting way that Dr. Montessori approaches teaching math is she will first start with the concrete, then te she teaches the abstract, and then the children combine it. Okay, let me give you an example. First, we teach children how to co count objects or counting up to 10. Then we will teach them how to write the symbols for 1 to 10. And then we combine the two by telling them to count objects and match it to the corresponding symbol. This is a pattern that follows throughout. We will learn the concrete, we will learn the abstract, and then we combine it to bring our learning together. Montessori math is really very, very interesting and very beautiful. If you've watched all the videos that we've done on Montessori math, you can see that she has made a very otherwise abstract subject, something that children can touch, feel, and experience. And when children do this, when they are able to manipulate objects to get an understanding of addition or subtraction or hundreds and thousands, it really makes the information sit with them and stick with them. I don't know how many of you have been through this, but I struggled a lot with mathematics when I was going to school. And the more I struggled, the dumber I felt. The more stupid I felt, the more useless I felt, and it just kept getting harder and my self-esteem kept going lower. But the minute I got the understanding, I got a teacher in my last year of high school who helped me to really understand it, and that's when I felt empowered to tackle numbers. The world of numbers wasn't so scary. I didn't feel dumb. My self-esteem went up and I went on to score an A in my O-levels. Now imagine young children having that feeling of empowerment right from the age of three when they start working with the math materials. Why should they ever struggle like we did? Why should they feel less than for, you know, something that anybody can do, right? This is the beauty of Montessori math, is that it empowers every child to have confidence in working with numbers because they understand the concepts at a sensory level. They're able to uh, take in the concept and it sticks with them because we've talked about this. The child has an absorbent mind. What we teach them in these golden years, these first six years of life stays with them and that becomes their foundation for math, which they will carry forward for the rest of their life. They develop a love for numbers, they develop a confidence in doing mathematics, and they're able to go forward into elementary school with this confidence that they have. One of the differences again with Montessori math and the Montessori approach is that unlike conventional school where everybody has to do the same activity at the same time for the same given period, in a Montessori classroom, they can work at their own pace. Maybe I need, you know, an extra month to grasp a certain topic. Maybe I need 10 repetitions to really understand what Montessori, what multiplication is about. Whereas, you know, my friend, he just does it in two times and he gets it. Everybody's mind is different. It learns differently. And in this classroom, children have that freedom to work on something as much or even as little as they need and progress on forward. Maybe you would like to learn more about Montessori math, more than we have shown you on uh, through our YouTube channel. We offer courses just about Montessori math 
You don't have to do any assignments. You can just watch our videos and learn all about the entire Montessori math curriculum. Uh, you can head to our website, which I will link right here and also in the descriptions box. And you can go there and look at our courses and purchase what might interest you, what might suit your child's needs and learn more so that you can help your child at school or at home. Well, that wraps up our Montessori math lesson for today. We hope you had a blast counting, sorting, and exploring the wonderful world of numbers with us. If you're as crazy about math as we are, give this video a thumbs up and share it with all your math-loving friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications so you can be the first to know when we share more Montessori magic. In the meantime, keep counting, keep adding, and keep subtracting. And remember, math is always more fun when you do it the Montessori way. Until we meet again, have a beautiful day.